It's been a touch over two years since I started the DIY smart home series and since I started installing and using smart home tech. So I thought that I would give you an update on what's been working well, what really hasn't, and some of the extra advice that I've picked up over these years when it comes to setting up your own smart kit. First, a quick recap of what stuff I have set up. Right now, there are three main areas I have smart tech in, which are heating, lighting, and power. I have a custom smart heating system that uses temperature sensors in my office and bedroom to control a Zigbee thermostat connected to my boiler. I have a few different smart lighting solutions, some Philips Hue bulbs, some uh, Ananaleaf Matter Bulb 2, and a little bit extra there. I've also got some Zigbee and Matter smart plugs that control, or sort of connect to and control things like my Magic Mirror display, monitor my fridge's power usage, at least for now, and monitor my DIY solar power usage. I do also have some Ubiquiti cameras and actually soon a real link one too, but I'll leave those out for this video. So what has worked? Well, for starters, Home Assistant. Home Assistant has been amazing. I can remember a time where over the last two years of continuous usage, something went wrong and it was exclusively Home Assistant's fault. It can be a little tricky to work with at times, and due to the open source nature, it isn't always easy to track down why something might be happening, especially when it comes from the, a third party add-on or extension, but on the whole, Home Assistant is a remarkably stable platform, at least for the stuff that I'm using it for. It's also getting progressively easier to use too, which I think helps make it more accessible. As for hardware, the Philips Hue dimmer switch V2s that I got last year to replace the dreadful Mose uh, Zigbee scene switchers have been rock solid. They are still Zigbee devices, but they now don't drop out, don't need new batteries every three months. In fact, about a year later, they're still going strong, and they're always quick to respond. I really like them. The Philips Hue Zigbee bulbs have also been pretty decent too. The Matter devices, the Eve Smart Plug and the Nanoleaf Matter Bulb, have been great as well. Really quick to respond, re pretty reliable, and especially now Home Assistant supports the Eve plug properly, I'm really happy with it. On the Zigbee power front, both the Samsung SmartThings plug and a much cheaper Inner, I-N-N-R, one that I have, both work really well. The inner one technically works a little better, there's a few more actual useful measurements, although the total power usage number is reported uh, way too high, I think it's by a factor of about 100. Um, it reads as 5.5 megawatt hours of usage, but I think it's actually more like 55 kilowatt hours instead. That's not too bad though. Something that has started working well is the Nanoleaf Essentials light strip. I wasn't entirely sure that I would be able to connect this, especially reliably, to Home Assistant, being Bluetooth or HomeKit over Thread, but there have actually been some updates recently, and since I already have a Thread network running for the Matter devices, it was remarkably easy to add that to Haas or Home Assistant, and it now works reliably. I'm really pleased that this is working. I actually use the Hue Dimmer V2 to control that one as well. So what hasn't worked? Well, I've had Matter dump out on me once or twice. I think that was mostly because I forgot to enable the watchdog setting in Haas, which restarts an add-on if it crashes. Since enabling that, I've had exactly zero problems and it's been as stable as a rock. Realistically, most of my issues have kind of ironed themselves out by now. For a while, Node-RED had a bug that basically looped uh, actions, but I fixed that in my code, so that's no big deal. The Akara motion sensor, the Zigbee one that I have, just stopped working. Like, it still flashes when you try and reconnect it, and I've even tried a new battery just in case, but it never managed to either reconnect or stay connected to the Zigbee network anymore. Interestingly, a friend actually has a pretty similar setup to what I do, and he hasn't had any problems. So that might just be a, an issue with my unit, it's obviously an earlier one. 
I can't say for sure, but I can't say that I fully recommend the, the Zigbee uh, motion and light sensor, at least that one anymore. I've also had a bit of a mixed experience with the Sonoff Zigbee temperature sensors. One of them is still going strong, but one is outright dead. Nothing will seemingly bring it back to life. I've tried swapping a battery, uh, but uh, like all of that stuff, it just will not reconnect. So I swapped to an Akara temperature sensor, and that has been great, at least so far. Anything that is battery related, especially the Zigbee, has been pretty hit or miss for me. The other smart device that has been driving me up the bloody wall is the Nanoleaf Shapes panels, and specifically the controllers. I am currently on my fourth Shapes controller, which is frankly insane. Nanoleaf knows these things are defective, they even have a really simple recall and replacement form that I've been filling out every nine months on average, but I mean, it's kind of insane that, uh, to me that a product that still costs as much as it does is still broken, they haven't revised the controller to fix whatever issue it has. The controller's just a brick themselves, no lights, no inputs, no resets, nothing works, they're dead as a doornail. The problem I have is that at some point, Nanoleaf are going to stop sending me new controllers. At some point, they're just going to end of life it, the, the whole product line, and forget that I and everyone who actually bought one of these kits exists. So, me being me, I'm planning on doing something about that. At some point soon, I'm going to be at least trying to reverse engineer how the controller, you know, talks to the panels, and all being well, I'll make an open source project that anyone can make to revive their expensive three LED plastic panels. It goes without saying though that I do not under any circumstances buy Nanoleaf Shapes panels. The essential stuff is fine, in fact some of it's actually really good, but the Shapes panels are just terminally defective. If you want some recommendations for stuff that you should buy, I highly recommend the Philips Hue dimmer switch V2s for an easy place anywhere smart remote. The Nanoleaf Matter stuff works great, and if you can get a Sonoff Dongle Plus V2, uh, the one with the EFR32, uh, I'll leave a uh, link in the description and, and show you on the screen which one I mean, um, and get the multi-protocol stuff working, as in running both Zigbee and Thread, and therefore Matter on just one radio dongle, I would swing more towards buying Matter products wherever possible. Although, frankly, the selection is still pretty small, so if you just want to get, you know, kind of go all out and buy all of the stuff right now, then I think Zigbee is still my preferred choice there. And speaking of Matter devices, you will need to make sure that it's listed as Matter over Thread, rather than just Matter or just Thread. Devices like the uh, Onviz HS2 switch uh, do use Thread, but, I mean... I... Realistically, I don't think I can get this hooked up to Home Assistant. Maybe if you have a Bluetooth pass-through into Home Assistant, you might be able to do that, but that isn't something I can do right now. Also, maybe with an iPhone you could also get that working, but I don't have any Apple devices, so for as an example, this is a no-go for me. This just will not work. I can't use it, at least right now. So yeah, that's a look at my smart home tech, what has worked and what hasn't, and I would love to hear your experience with smart home tech in the comments below. What stuff has worked for you, and also what hasn't, what should we all avoid? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, including more of the Smart Home series, you can hit the subscribe button and check out more videos on the end cards. I will have a link to the products, at least that I recommend, in the description. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.